friend and colleague, Mr. Fritzen, the composer and the lyricist of this particular beautiful musical, one of my favorites. Um, he would like to have a few words before we uh, start. Thank you. I just wanted to say a few things about Thumbelina and composition and writing. And I want you to know, a lot of people are like me and they want to write the musical. Uh, I'd say Thumbelina is probably the 12th one that I've written. Most of them I've performed at one place or another. Um, I wanted to know that a lot of musicians that are always thinking about doing this, we're writing something and trying to get it published and things of that nature. I, I find that the hardest thing for anyone to do is this, is write it down, write it down. It's amazing what road lies ahead before you when you do the hard work first. If you can get the hard work done, then um, everything else follows. Because you can see it's just a lot of a lot of writing, a lot of scrubbing and scripting. And this is a small, this is a short one from some of the many others that I've written. Uh, some have been published, some have performed in, in big theaters. Um, but it's all really because of one thing, and that is, is that the person that decides that they want to be a writer, that wants to write for musical theater, wants to do whatever it is, it's they do the work. The talent, all that stuff, that, that comes later. Talent is like experience. You get the experience for writing. Things that I would never have thought, the things that, um, the things that I had to go through to be a writer um, was a tough road. But if you do the work, it comes to you. So I'd like to uh, hope that I can inspire anyone out there that has that same thoughts, same dream, of doing something like this, just remember, do the hard stuff first. If you can do the hard thing, you can finish it, you can complete it, then the rest will follow. Yep.
friend I am in love. I'm sure of it. I know it. Very speedy work. What are you today? Wake up with the idea of falling in love with someone. Shall I put you pretty to scooter her heat today? You may test it if you wish, that anymore. But I feel as though she's the one. Perhaps she can deliver me from this family curse I am under. And I believe as though this beautiful, singing, majestic creature can possibly deliver me from all this despair. One can only hope. I tell you this, my dear Nanamar, because I trust you, not just as a servant, but as a trusted friend, a knack that gets things accomplished. That is why I'm bringing you onto this operation. In that case, Prince Noah. Prince Noah in particular! Yes, in particular. And if a friend of mine falls in love with some girl, I shall go straight out and call her off to him. I have no intentions of recovering quickly. I found out about her family, where she lives. Oh, that sounds perfect. Oh, you could call me Prince so agreeable to that. How goes it? How goes it? Well, it goes as usual. Lousy. That's how it goes. My son, my sole heir to the throne, cursed to be a prince without a name. Do you have any idea what it feels like to wait for a good night on PC Dust just to once again discover you don't know what to call your own child? I can think of a few. When the prince was younger, it was slightly easier to keep up. Prince, you did so well in Prince great job. But he's gotten more complicated as he's gotten older. There comes a time in every king's life where he's thinking about passing up a royal name. And how can I pass on a name that won't stick? Well, the queen seems half and over these days. The queen, the queen. Don't get me started on the queen. Last night she called him Prince Don't Let the Bed Bugs Bite. <laughs> and yesterday, when we objected to her calling him Prince Decky, she called him Prince Prickly Wiggle. It's undignified and totally ridiculous in the name she comes up with. Well, here comes the majesty now. Hello, dear. Now I'm all Prince Fudge. Mother. Me and Adam were just discussing a curse upon your son. He's always my son in your family. And as for the curse, you know I don't like being reminded of it. Ever since my son was born, I have loved a man and adore. He has really been everything to me. But then came up one. Reverse left with no identity. Now when we call it for dinner, he never comes to the table. Starving a stranger for weak dinner. If we could give him a label, what is Hey! 
off with this matchmaking business. I'm sorry I've startled you, you fine young specimen. But I've been sent by my comrade Tonius to deliver this love address. Won't you take it? It does not bite. It is a love letter of sorts. I cannot read it, for I was only born earlier this day. This is wasting my time and making me late to my rehearsal. Hey!
of our listeners and I are telling you slowly, trippingly on the tongue. A ding of the factors for actors in the and feather for the crime against genius theater. Is everyone accounted for? I am here, I am here. Apologies for all my lateness. Lizardo makes his excuses as well, but be along shortly. He had urgent business in the wood. Let's get ready to start. This part of Jeffrey's make is so lonely. I'll have to be prompted from start to finish. To be or not to be. Let go of me, you slimy, revolting character! Sorry for all my tardiness. I was hiring as a new seamstress. I thought Maggot Peas with an extra set of hands. I said, hand me! Dog! First! But my thumb! Toadius! She bit my thumb! Yes, yes. Very good work, Lizard. The costumes can always use extra help. However, I have an even better idea. You see, Crowbar, I came upon this maiden singing in the woods, and I had the most brilliant spark of a genius thought. She has one of the most marvelously lyrical voices, except, of course, for mine, that I have ever heard, and I was thinking, why not give her a shot at the female lead in your new play, the part of Juniper? But, but I'm to play the part of Juniper. I already know the whole thing by heart. Oh, rotisserie, rotisserie, where art thou, oh, rotisserie? I think we're going to have to do this for our opportunity. I protest! This here is a girl for you. Yes, let's hear it. She looks like she's good for the art. Oh, rotisserie, rotisserie, for thou, rotisserie, deny thy culture and abuse thy flock. Or if thou wilt not, but be plucked, my lord, and I'll no longer be a clingless vine. It is settled then. What is your professional actress name? My name? My name? Well, I don't have a name. But she bit my thumb. Toria, she bit my thumb! How about Thumbelina? Thumbelina? She looks like Thumbelina. The greatest Asian, don't you think? Jeanette Lazardo, there will always be other parts. Perhaps you can play the queen in the play. I will put in a good word with the playwright. Out of my sight, you traitor. You, you, disassembler of parts. I'm not. I have rehearsal and then a costume fitting for my chicken outfit. Let me know if you change your mind about the queen. Ciao, for now. <laughs> yes, Toadius. Ciao, for now. Oh, woe is me. Cut down in the prime of my acting career. But I will not stay down. That I can promise. They have her now, but they will not keep her for long. Already my superior brain thinks up of a plot for the demise of this Thumbelina. <laughs> and the return of my role within the bottom feeder players. They have not heard the last soliloquy from Lizardo.
play the home crowd, our transportation, and the amount of games we put over the number of days while we've been waiting. I apologize, I do. Please forgive me. After all, I am also just simple gutter snipe. <laughs> You are two lowly looking creatures, which may be secured of the job of ridding you of that horrible part stealer, Thumbelina. I will coach them and hire them for the job. <coughs> Excuse me, my good companions. But might I inquire your reason for standing in front of my theater? I shall handle this, Dr. Snipes. We are creatures of business and have a client who wants to secure our services. Yeah, we're what you call big business entrepreneurs. Ain't that right, Merchant Chance? Entrepreneurs. I don't think I've heard of this term. I myself am looking for two thugs for hire. Maybe you two are interested. That is, if you're not too busy. We're thugs, right, Merchant Chance? <laughs> we might be interested for the right price, if you catch my drift. Oh, I catch your drift. Believe me, I catch your drift. <laughs> wait here while well, I talk it all over with my partner. Yeah, wait here, because she never does nothing without consulting me first. <laughs> we'll take the job. Very well, if you insist. I'm looking to make a certain female disappear. I want her gone permanently. Oh, no. 
but it's very undignified for the purpose. Here she is now. We better get out of sight. A rotisserie, rotisserie. What brought thou rotisserie? Deny thy poultry and abuse thy flock. Mark thou wilt not. Be plucked, my lord, and on the longer be a clingless vine.
all of us. I've been looking all over for you, for I, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> for I've been displeased with my current marital status. How are you getting on thus far with the search for my future housewife? Well, I must admit, Mr. Moore, the available females have not been breaking down my door. Well, I do think I am correct when I say that a decent matchmaker would have no issues fighting a lady who fights by advanced circumstances to her liking. Don't think it insults me. What's the attitude my final will? I'm sorry for what you call an insult, I'm sure, but I'm eager to know what the problem is. Spirit of the woods, I'm sure. Now I'm quite excited about this, then, Mr. Moore. I think I understand the problem now. You're being cursed. What did it will? My next mother, Mrs. Moore. Mo what made you marry Moore with a curse you hate about him? Mother Moore did give an evil eye or two to one of my girlfriends. <laughs> I only have one clean pair of undies. I better get out of here. <laughs> Like you need a situation that's quite a single and a married and a dog where you can walk oh, over 
too. Keep at it. Beverly Roy Watson been here or something? Oh, Melina, I've been searching everywhere for you. Well, you found me, but I'm sorry. I'm not in that shape for the performance. I came here with Prince, um, Prince looking everywhere. Well, <laughs> Prince looking for me. Oh dear, that must be the gentleman Miss Mudboss has fetched. Maggie, please, I can't see anyone at present. Entertain the gentleman at the door. Ah, uh, my fair young maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Muddlemouse told me that you agreed to let me make my advances towards you. I'm far more exuberant than you know, for your attractiveness excels even Miss Muddlemouse's description. Oh, um, thank you, I think. Well, without delay, I will give you my resume. I am fit for marriage despite my advanced years. I have an impressive allotment of finances, a fine house, and a moderate servants. What do you mean an impressive allotment of finances? A clean bill of health, a handsome profile, if you're looking at me from the left, <laughs> a fair enough disposition, my intellect is far superior, and my reputation is beyond reproach. So what do you say? Can we call it a match and get to our honeymoon in a timely fashion? Um, I really need to think on this one. <coughs> As a woman of supreme importance, I'm prominent, productive, and precise. Praise and opulence by aristocrats at tea with the queen, not once but twice. But sadly, something's lacking, something's missing, something's bare. And that something that is absent is standing over there. <laughs> I bet over there, sorry. <laughs> yes, it's hard to believe my life's not complete. I need someone to massage my big feet. Someone to do some chores for me. Like cleaning and cooking and sweeping and sewing and scraping and scrubbing and baking and mopping. Folding and beating and dusting and dicing and washing and drying with no signs of stopping. Someone to do these magnificent things.
I'm searching on the exact calculations, but all I'm in looking for is a future house ride. Um, I accept. You accept? Yes, I accept. Now run along and tell me your house. Oh, I will, I will. And I can't tell you how happy this makes me. Yes, I am very happy too. Now run along before I change my mind. Don't think too hard on the batter. You don't want to tax your brain or my money. Be off, I am missing you already. Yes, yes, but before I do, won't you favor me with a kiss to seal the deal? You are my fiance after all. Close your eyes first. Mm, it's like kissing Bob Marley. <laughs> I must be off to talk to Miss Buttermouse about the pre nuptial agreement. I don't want her spending all of my money after all. Yeah. This cable can't be anywhere. I must be. Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? I wish I'm glad you had to wear that despicable mole. Don't worry, Quentin. We'll find out some way to break off the engagement. Maggie, I need you to explain to Miss Buttermouse. Oh, not for me.
and Queen Jocelyn.
is left. A confession is what's needed, a one tiny theft. All right, we admit it, we stole your third child. But since you had two, our crime is quite mild. Maggie was stolen in the 21 scene, returning your heir, ring, and sister redeemed. And now for the couples in their proper places, for what's a love story without tights and laces? <coughs> the mole with the mouse, they have money in common. Together their finances will end up not Roman. <laughs> and Maggie has fallen on ears of the neck, as queen she keep up for giving the back. But what a prince no one and I from Belila. So be married, be actors, and perform the arena. And all is repaired, we are ready to sing. Just, Just as soon as we get Thumbelina on her wings.
Thank you for joining us in this crazy uh, world we call Thumbelina. Thank you so much. 